Welcome to Let's Play Dungeons. Dungeons is one of those games which follows the it's good to be bad theme. A theme that was first started by Dungeon Keeper all them years ago. And um, Overlord and a few other games all follow the same style and place the player in the, in the role of the evil Overlord. So in this case it's a Dungeon Lord. Now, this is a campaign map and we're going to show you one of the single player campaigns. But before we do, I want you to understand that I haven't played this for long yet and I might make some mistakes, but far as I know, there's three different types of levels with three different types of creatures inhabit them levels and three different types of decorating styles. And only one of them looks a lot like Dungeon Keeper. The rest look different. Even though the style of the game is the same, some of them look more like Dungeon Keeper than others, which is where the confusion comes in. Now what you're looking at here is the Dungeon Heart and next to it a Monster Room. The Monster Room, which is on the um, left of the Dungeon Heart, is actually in, the, in my area of influence and so has increased the number of spawns I'm allowed to place. The spawns are the pentagrams you'll see. <clears throat> They're limited by the number of those Monster Rooms I own. What you're looking at here is the interfaces, which I'm just showing you exist. This game also includes an element of character progression, so it is technically an RPG as well. The way the game works, you attract heroes into your dungeon, make them happy, and then you harvest their soul energy. The soul energy goes up when they're happy. If they're not happy, if they've got a long walk to get anywhere, they'll just go and attack your dungeon heart and try and kill you. But if they are happy, they'll wander around your dungeon, quite happily looting it until you kill them and harvest their soul energy. Soul energy is like gold. It's used to buy things in the dungeon. So the more happy happy heroes you kill, the more soul energy you get. Also, you get the gold back which they've collected. So you kill them, any gold they've collected goes back into your treasury and can be used to buy other things. This is a battle. I'm just showing you it quickly here so you can see what a one-on-one -on -one battle looks like. There were actually three of these guys originally, Your but I just wanted to show you what the Dungeon master. Lord does, nice and clearly. This guy hasn't got any soul energy, so killing him won't make any difference to my dungeon. But if he had, an imp would now run by, pick him up, take him back to the, to the jail. Now, One the soul energy is spent on decorating, and here we're going to place hero. a trap. Any hero or monster not on my side that walks over that trap would get stung by it. We also are going to place this in the uh, this torture device in our jail. Any heroes you kill or capture get sent back there and dropped in the cell. You can see one arriving now, an imp's carrying it back, he's dropping it in the cell for us. Now we place this torture device there. Between themselves and that torture device, this room here effectively generates soul energy from us from the captured heroes. You can see I've got quite a few in various um, rooms. Of various sides. But as you can see, I'm using the menu in the top right to actually select prestige items and decorative items for various rooms. The rooms themselves don't really aren't really functional for me. They're more an attraction for the heroes. And that red dotty thing you see floating around the outside, that's the limit of my area of influence. I can't build outside that area. Not without a new monster spawn. And the monster spawns, like you say, are limited to the number of... Um, monster home cell type things that I own. Now here I'm decorating what looks like uh, an armory. But in a minute I'll try and uh, put down some um, some library decorations in it and it won't work. Here I go. So I haven't noticed I've made the mistake and I'm wondering why it isn't working. This is because only, uh, only armory stuff can be placed in an armory. So in only libraries have been placed in a library and the various rooms attract different types of heroes. Like for instance, mages love libraries. Now, <clears throat> the whole point of this game is not just to have one of each, but to have many of the each. Because the heroes, once they've visited a room, it becomes less popular. So they move on to the next library. And eventually they'll forget about the first room and they'll all start going back to it. So the more rooms you've got, the happier they are. You only get like two rooms really, armory and... Um, a library but you build a lot of them and you can mix treasuries with them and make traps in other rooms also use the prestige items which you can buy using your soul and gold and gold or whatever to uh, decorate them 
as you can see um, you know, the rooms are fairly active with imps running around the more you decorate the room the more attractive they are to heroes obviously an empty room is not attractive at all and if a hero has to walk too far to an interesting room they get bored and attack you or attack your heart now this is the dungeon heart here and that's my guardian garden and that's a monster room there if i click on it you can get these stats there they're just decorative but they by putting them inside my area of influence that means building a monster spawn near them i effectively increase my small spawn cap so i can place more spawns some spawns cost more to place than others so you really when you're expanding your area of influence you want to be using the cheap ones and when you want to defend yourself you want to be using the mean tough ones as you can see here, look, there are different types on this level. But on other levels, like the hell levels and the dungeon levels, instead of the temple levels, which this is, you get different rooms and different creatures. Now, in a minute, here's one. Now, you see, this is a hero gate. Now, heroes come in through them gates there and then start walking around your dungeon. See, there's plenty of them. The more you open, the more you get. So at the end of the day, if you open 20 of them, you're going to get flooded with heroes. But that means you're going to have a steady income. That's good for you. The more heroes coming around your base, or the, your, your um, dungeon, the better, basically. Provided you can cope with them. But you need to keep them, keep your monsters leveled up. And for that, you've got to use the dungeon heart. And you've got to spend soul energy points to, to level up your creatures. So they can continue to take on the heroes. Because the heroes level up over time as well. Every few minutes, the heroes go up a level, so it gets harder and harder to kill them. Here you can see me, I've mapped out an area to be kept, to be dug out. This is the missionary uh, place that I've got to take on in this mission. And I'm trying to place a, a spawn point there, you see? That pentagram, that's going to probably be snakes or something, something nice and cheap. Here we go, you see that mage there? He's looting that chest and he's very happy about it. He's going to now walk Love across to that um, prestige item and think, ooh, interesting carving we have here. Now, I can I can make him follow my route around my dungeon by placing them where I want him to go. These prestige items, you know, raise my prestige and make my dungeon lord stronger, but they also allow me to dictate where these heroes walk. For instance... The Someone's last thing you want to do you. is stick a load of them near your dungeon heart. Because if you did that, all the heroes would flock straight to your dungeon heart. And kill you in the game over. So you put them outside of that area. But you can also put them around traps like I have here. See where I've got loads of monsters waiting for the heroes to walk in. They'd then walk into my trap and they'll die. This guy here, he's, he's, he's a different type of hero. He's a champion. Champions only have one goal, that's to wipe you out. They just go straight for your dungeon heart. That's a mage behind him. Now he's going to walk across one of my traps. Yes, this is a freeze. The game does freeze. Then carries on. I've never known it crash when it freezes. It just stops for some reason. Now, um, they are too powerful. as you can see, as he gets closer to my uh, trap, the action gets thicker and harder. I'll soon come in with my dungeon lord to help finish him off. You don't get much soul energy from these, if any, because um, they're not happy to be there. They're just there to wipe you out. Now, what I'm clicking on there is a scroll. On the other side of that book is spells that I can reuse over and over again. But scrolls are awarded for stuff you've done in previous missions. Or whatever. It says and you only get to use them once and they disappear. There you go. There's a magic missile one. See, that finished him off. Here's um, a mage about to trigger a trap near there. See that on the wall of flame trap? I don't know why the other two never triggered it, but as soon as he approached, he did. Now we see the mage just walked off screen, and I've got three heroes on me there. So I've just spawned two skeletons, which is a spell I can reuse over and over again. The spells actually I could reuse over and over again, I've dragged and dropped into uh, my spell bar, which is near the minimap in the bottom, the bottom right, or bottom left, should I say. As you can see, the uh, action gets quite fierce. It looks a lot like Dungeon Keeper. There is actually a spell to get the behind the Dungeon Lord view, so when he walks around you can follow him, or control him directly, should I say. Because he is you in the game. Now, these are some of the uh, monster spawns for the temple level. These are frogs and um, some weird tiger type things. 
You could also see some of these lizards, flying lizards. <laughs> I must say, I prefer the one, the level with zombies and uh, skeletons on it. To be honest. Defeated a hero. There we go. Now this is a good example of what it's about. Now this guy has got a big green bar underneath his name. That's his soul energy. That's what you're after. When that goes that high, that means it's time to harvest him. So that's what we're doing here. All the powers. Now an imp will take him back. And that will get added to my total. And I'll use that to upgrade my dungeon a bit more. There's another guy here with the same. He's got lots of um, soul energy. So we can harvest him as well. These creatures you see in attacking him are really there for the heroes to hack. To make them happy. It might appear to be helping me kill him. But they're really cannon fodder. They're not there to defend the room. They're there to give the, dungeon, well, the heroes something to do. See, they like fighting some of these heroes. As you can see, I'm decorating the room now with some of the uh, gold and soul energy I've picked up. You know, I'll be making other improvements, spending that. Backstab. And that will in turn attract more heroes. So you can see there, I've got a room there that needs decorating. That's bad. You should always have all your rooms with something in them. So I'm going to place just a basic room there. It isn't going to be anything fancy. But it, it at least means that the heroes won't be totally bored when they walk past it. But the eye the room isn't decorated. Bigger the room, the more items you can place in the room, of course. And the better they are. Your jail is actually the heart of your dungeon, really, because that's where all your bad guys get taken, all your heroes get taken when you kill them, and where you harvest all their soul energy from. Prestige is an important thing in this game as well. As prestige allows you to, uh, you know, make your dungeon lord stronger. The higher it is, the better it is for you. Also allows you to lure heroes around your um, around your dungeon because they'll walk from one prestige item to the next, admiring them. Which means if you keep them well away from any sensitive areas, the heroes will stay well away from any sensitive areas. This one here, if you notice, he's gone straight for the treasure. Now, the treasure has a mild effect on this character, which I believe is a thief. But you just start watching the bar underneath the uh, red bar once it starts fighting these lizards. Or flying snakes. It starts to go green, slowly. That's because this particular character likes to fight. If you click on the character, you get some stats about it. It tells you what it enjoys. Lots of stats like that in this game. Selecting many things will give you information. Most of the rooms are eye candy as far as you're concerned. They're just functional for the heroes. The heroes like to explore them and do that kind of thing. Your job is to attract them like some evil theme park attendant. <clears throat> there is a spell that allows me to reveal areas of the map that I haven't seen yet. This is the monastery as part of the mission. It's what I'm after. Now my hip dungeon lord's going to have to go in there on his own. Why pull that out? Because unlike Dungeon Keeper, I don't have an army to send in. Just him. And yes, you've got to take all them on as well. A monster just <clears throat> tore like I said, prestige is important. Master. Prestige makes your dungeon, dungeon lord um, tougher. Master, we have broken through to the monastery. Now this is the um, final bit of the video now. And this is where I actually start doing the mission. So I'm going to cut it off here. But I'll leave you to watch the final bit of this. It is a good game. It is worth having. I am recommending it. Go and buy it.